somebody does so much, but for who he is. Yeah. You understand? He's the king of kings. And yet you're so important to him that he came and died. Gave his only son. So this morning we're going to sing praises to his name. Worship the Lord with us this morning.
change the situation that looks dark and bleak, yeah. and God can change that situation yes, to bring sunshine yes. into your life. Amen. Yes. Lord, Lord God, God. I, I, uh, I was thinking that, you know, uh, we, uh, we sing the other song. The song just kind of spoke to me this morning, and Steve was talking about, and uh, that we, there's, the enemy robs us of things. I, I see it in people's lives all the time. I see there is no peace in their life. There's no love in their life. There's no joy. You know those three things people really desire to have in their life? Peace, love, and joy. How many likes peace? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like turmoil in my life. Amen? I like peace in my life. Amen? And I like to have joy in my life. I don't think serving God should be a joy for you. Amen? I think it ought to be joy in our heart, unspeakable and full of glory. I think it's all right to leap in the house of God. Amen. Yeah. I think it's all right to be happy about yeah. him. Amen. Yeah. I, I tell you, we've got enough pain in our life. We got enough joy in our life. We need to have some joy in our life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Nehemiah said the leap for joy. Yeah. You know where joy comes from? It doesn't come from possessing things. It doesn't come from people. Because people sometimes don't bring joy to your life. Yeah. But it comes from knowing him. And Isaiah said that we draw joy from the wells of salvation. Yeah. And so when we know where we're going, I know where I'm going. Yeah. Amen. I know where I'm headed. Hallelujah. And I know that it brings joy to my heart every day. See, I'm not this way on Sunday only. I work with some of the people here. They know how I am on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I am the same all the time, everywhere, any place. I'm not embarrassed of God or ashamed of God. And I make it known that I serve God. Amen? And so, well, you're a pastor. Well, we're all called to be ministers of the Lord. Amen? And so we come to give Him praise and worship Him this morning and magnify Him for His goodness to us. Amen? We're so glad to have each one of you here this morning. We're glad to have our visitors here this morning. Amen? Uh, for some of you who don't know, Donna over here was a real estate lady that helped us get this building. <laughs> <laughs> this was not a very good place at that time. And we bugged her three times we come over here and looked at this property. We kept praying about it. God, you know, if it's your way, you make a way. God made a way. We're here, right? <laughs> and so, uh, and, and in three years, we, we thought we bought the building, but God did it in a year and a half. Amen. And so we, we own the building now. Now the property on this side, the property on that side is for sale. And so, uh, I don't know. God can do something. <laughs> and so anyway, we're believing God. We have, we do have quite a few people out this morning. There's a lot of sickness going around. Amen. 
And so we're going to be praying for those here in a few minutes. But if you'll get your offerings ready, and if you'll bring them up, please, and I can bring them up when they say they'll play something. Will the joy of the God be victory? Foos. 
Foosball. Foosball. Glory to God. 
Amen. So grab somebody by the hand this morning. Think of somebody special in your life that you want to, 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 to be saved. And uh, let's just agree with one another this morning. Father, we come to you, God, because you are the author of salvation, God. God, there is no salvation in any other but you, Father God. So, God, we agree for those people in our lives, Father God. We agree, agree for every person that you are, they are asking for, for their salvation, Lord God. God, we know that you draw people by your Holy Spirit. And we pray right now, God, that you would draw these people by your Spirit. You would speak to their hearts, Father. You would establish them in your house, Father God, and that they would give you praise and glory. We thank you for the souls that are coming in. We thank you for all that you're doing, Lord. And we give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to God. Do uh, you have announcements? Uh, uh, okay. uh, the announcements this week is, of course, uh, we started the Snooze or Lose. Uh, if you're interested in, uh, it's a bunch of the ladies who are uh, meeting every two weeks to weigh in and to work on getting some weight down. And you know, I'm uh, really excited about it, you know, because it's $5 to join. Is that correct? $5 to join. And then whoever loses the most in a three month period gets the money. Plus canning, free can. Okay? Sounds good. I'm recording the weights. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No, seriously though, we do have a prayer meeting every Tuesday night here at 6 o'clock. Uh, we intercede for souls and uh, in people's lives for all the things that they have, uh, you know, holding up their body. Uh, we have Bible study every uh, Wednesday night at 6 o'clock here, believing in the Word. And uh, every Friday night, well, not every Friday night, but this Friday night, we will be having the youth meeting, and that is ages 11 and up, and I think we're going bowling this Friday night. Whoa. Do they want to go bowling? <laughs> you do? Are you 11? Well, praise the Lord. But that's all I have for right now. Except for, uh, keep in mind, in the month of June, we will be having a luau up here on the parking lot. Amen. And please, don't wear your mask first. Come on, man. Why don't you move out without a mask? No, seriously. I'll get you one, brother. I'll get you one. I'll let somebody wear it for me. I'll be the end of that. You got a point. But give a good uh, welcome this morning to uh, Brother Danny, his darling daughter, there, a beautiful young lady. I'm sorry, I can't remember. Miss Felicia. Felicia. The joy of the Lord. Yeah. And then, uh, what's his name down there? John, you're busy. Jack. Okay. We need a Don't matter. Let's see. You wouldn't believe some of the stuff we used to call him, but we weren't Christians. <laughs> there was many different things. Can you tell us? You're welcome. You can we turn this up just a little. You know, they used to say that old guy used, is used for a, like a coat rack. Steve was using it for a rock rack. <laughs> He was the beating post. <laughs> Not really, but you know, I gotta I say that. Yeah, he's a piggy. <laughs> All right, praise the Lord. It's good to be here this morning. Yeah. Glory to God. Been walking a long ways away from God for quite a while, and for a while I've uh, been driving a truck for several years now, and it's every day I'm in that truck, and I'm always talking to the Lord to some of the stuff, but I've just not found that way back. And I'm not saying this is something that God did to do that or to get me back or anything else. But I do know this. When we don't walk with God, that was the door to Satan. That's fine. You ain't walking with God, you open the door to Satan. That's the way it is. You're either for God or you're against God. You can jog a little fence if you want, but that opens the door to Satan. And uh, in my life, we're just not so out. You know, I haven't been. And uh, I have been before. I got some testimonies you wouldn't believe. Miracles, 
super miracles of God that came to my life when I was close to him and walking in faith and stuff. But uh, lately, uh, I've been seeking this. Like I've got this dry zone and I just can't find it, you know. Can't find him. And I realized through the circumstances I'm going through, I could actually for once and thank the Lord reach up and just felt the spirit come in. And I bring you that. And I know my heart's not there yet. It takes the word. It takes praying to stay close to him to get that heart built to him where you're communing with God all the time and, and carrying that life we need to carry. And I'm saying this because I need it. I'm not saying because I got it, and I do have it, some of it, but we need that. We need that communion every day with God. Amen. And we need to strike out in our life as first God. Amen. Not a job. It is our job. We have to have our job. We live in this world. Amen. We've got to have our relationships. We've got family. We've got to have that love. They need that love. Amen. Each of us need to commune together, and especially through God. But you need a relationship with God that's right. And I'm finding that so much lately. And I knew it for years. And I just, you know, you get away from God, you get out of your Bible, and it's hard to get back. Yes, it is. It's tough. It's a hard road to hold, dude. You got the one with all the sunflowers and the couple birds and the cottonwoods. Everybody else got a little bit of grass to keep on holding down the road. And you, boy, you got the you got the side road, we always call it, the outside road. And it was the dog. So to speak. And when you get out of the Bible and stuff, you get over that side, you're going to find it all there. The cotton weed, the uh, sunflowers, go rat grass, water weed. Got on your hands and knees pulling that stuff up just to get it out of there so the plants can grow. And then on top of it all, when you get done holding that thing and it ends up growing inside, it never really produced that good because as you come into the field, that's when it gets big. So you get out of the side road. Let somebody else have that. Let's get in the middle where the growth is. Let's get where the hole is easy. Because once you're in God and you're close, it gets easy to walk through. And that's where I want to be. Amen. Yeah, I'm striving to get there. Amen. I'm telling you straight up, Amen. I got problems. Yeah. And when it comes spiritually, I'm just straight up. Amen. I'm of this world and I've been in this world. And I looked around a whole bunch of people in this world and I've let myself drift. Yeah. It's true. I'm going to say it's out, great, great, you need Jesus and all that. Hey, I need you too. Amen. But uh, lately, uh, I was having back and back pains. I guess that's what Terry would tell you. And I was in the hospital and got diagnosed with some problems. And uh, it was all up here. I mean, they don't, they wouldn't see me. That's Danny. No, we do. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's a pretty serious deal, but I am. Uh, I gotta be honest with you, God. As soon as they said what's going on, I'm at peace. I am truly at peace. My first thing was I gotta make sure my wife and my grandson are taken care of. And of course, pushing the children, we're all kind of all together in this thing, struggling to make it through life. And uh, my first thing, and, and I'm serious, it, it's gotta be God. And I'm at peace. Instant. And they said this and this. So, well, do I need to just want to make sure my wife and grandson and all this is going to be good? Or what are we doing here? That's got to be God. I've been a selfish son of God all my life. Are you kidding? That ain't me. I mean, I can love, but you please with uh, contingencies and crap, you know? Let's be honest about it. I guess I do love, and I think I love okay, but, and I'm finding that there was a better person in me than I thought there was. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I honestly, I ain't trying to brag. I'm just saying that I feel like there's a better person than there was when I'd seen the circumstances happen and all. And, and I thank God for it. Because the pig I've been in my life wasn't worth a flip. Yeah. <laughs> ain't no use to living life like that. Don't get me wrong, I've, I've tried to help people in my life. I've always been wanting to be generous in any way I can to help people. But you know, I'm trying to guide even in schools, the ones that I would take up for. Sometimes get beat up with them because the big guys are picking on them, you know. But I still don't see myself as any more than just a low down, no count, dirty, rotten, stinking straight up. Because some of the things I've done. I'm my worst critic, so I'd say, and he helps me out the right dog. Of course, he is right dog. You know, you get the, the devil can pound you with that stuff too, no doubt. But my Bible says it, and I got to accept this. 
My Bible says if I'm seeking God and accept Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and that He is my Lord and Savior, that I am trying to serve Him and I'm trying to walk that life. It doesn't say I got to be perfect, but it says I'm His righteousness in Him. Amen. And it says when He comes in me, this is the temple of God, don't it? Right. So when I walk around, the devil don't see me any use no more. He sees Jesus. Amen. Yeah, Jesus is what's in here. Amen. He don't see no any humans. He sees Jesus, and He hates Jesus with a passion. So if you're a Christian and you're being bombarded, don't think he's bugging you. He's bugging Jesus. Yeah. He hates God, and he has more hatred for him than there is possible to have. But Jesus got the most of the world for you to bring him right through this and right out. Amen. Yes, he does. And I, I went to the same time. But Jesus loves you, man. I know. Don't you to pray for me. My spiritual life, man. I'll take healing because I already got it. But I want spiritual, heartfelt, relief in my heart, total communion with God, which mostly comes, we have to do that. I pray for any releases and any blockages that might be an instant of ego in Jesus' name. And that is my prayer. I sat outside last night and I said, Lord, I don't care what, I want a relationship with you. Yeah, yeah. I said, I want to be used by you. Yeah. I don't care about the rest of this. I want to be right with you. Yeah. I don't care about how much money I got or anything else, but I want to be right with yeah. you. Yeah. Isn't you right with God? Isn't that the whole answer? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're really peaceful with God inside, isn't that what we're yeah. really honestly looking yeah. for? That peace, that joy, that happiness. Even if we lived outside in the middle of the winter in the cardboard box, we had that peace and that joy. Things would just be a whole, whole lot better. And I'm not saying to do that, of course. I think it'd be a little rough. But I'm just saying, him. Yeah, it's all about me. That communion with God. Be outgoing. Hey, Danny, he's my friend. Don't you corrupt him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, brother. Are you ready? <laughs> We're waiting on you, boy. <laughs> Come on, man. Move it. When trouble surrounds us.
coming back to fellowship with him. Right. Many, I'm not really going to preach about him, but I, so many people get up one morning and find their whole life changed. They didn't expect it to change, but it happened, whether they liked it or not. And how we face those situations in our life makes all the difference in our life. And I tell you what, in those situations, I think the love of God is even stronger. That God just pulls us to him. And it's like he wants to put his arms around you and love you and comfort you and tell you. It's like your mom and dad used to pick up and you're screaming, it's going to be all right. Pat, you know, you're going to be all right. You know? and, and so God loves us that much that no matter what we're going through, God never leaves us nor forsakes us. I have claimed that verse over and over again. There have been times in my life when I felt I was walking all along. You ever felt that? All along. You felt like when you prayed, the walls was the only thing here. Yeah. yeah. You felt like it was in the driest, desertest place that you could be in, and there was no, uh, looked like there was no hope out of this situation. And that's the picture that the devil paints. He wants to make you think your life is hopeless, you're going down, and you're, there's no way out of it. But God comes on the scene. I, I've been preaching a series of messages on prayer, and I this morning I felt like not to continue that message. I mean, I'm going to continue, but not today. Uh, but the one thing that the disciples asked Jesus, he just to pray. That's the one thing he asked, they asked him, teach us to pray. Yeah. And so I think that when God begins to draw us into that love and that relationship with him, that it begins to be something meaningful, it's something that we don't, we can't do without. I need God every day. I don't need God just on Sundays. I need God every day of my life. I need his strength. I need his love. I need him to help me to love those who are not loved. Anybody met someday? <laughs> you know what? I, 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 I post a lot on Facebook because I have hundreds of people who follow me on Facebook. And and I get so many of them tell me, oh, you know how much that helped me, you know. And I always pray about it. I ask God, what should I put on, you know. I always try to put uplifting stuff. And, but one of the scriptures God brought to my mind this week was that we're to esteem one another more highly than ourselves. Somebody's ever put self first. It's my way or no way. The highway. And we've all been there, but think about this. What if the body of Christ begin to let God's love flow through them? And they would begin to esteem others in their life more highly than themselves. If they begin to put their needs ahead of their need, their, their needs, if they begin to think, I'm going to help this person even though it's going to be a sacrifice on my part. I'm going to help them. What if we would esteem each other more highly than ourselves? Because that we've always, we always look out for ourselves, don't we? But God says he'll look out for us. God loves us enough that he'll look. He said that he knows what we have need of before we even ask. He knows what we have need of. And so when we begin to love God and we begin to put our trust in him and we begin to develop that loving relationship, the psalmist wrote this in Psalm 62. He says this in the very first verse. He says this. Truly my soul waiteth upon God, from, the, from him cometh my salvation. You know what? Wait there. It also gives an inclination that to wait in silence. You ever wait in silence? You ever come down to pray and just sit there and just just silent and, and listen, try to listen to what God has to say to you? Me, I have a hard time because I like to talk. And I had God tell me sometimes, just be quiet. Let me minister to your spirit. Well, that's what happened to me this morning as I came down and I, because uh, I have a lot of people that have asked me to pray and a lot of people are facing some very situa bad situations in their life and I begin to, to, to feel the presence of God and I just begin to look and sit there in silence and listen to him as he ministered to me and my spirit. And, and when I begin to feel the love of God enveloping me and I, and I begin to 
chills go there, even as I am now, because I felt his presence in such a powerful way. It's hard for me to be silent, and I kind of broke the silence, and then God reminded me, I told him to shut me up. And, and, and so I, 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 I sat there and listened to the voice of the Lord, and, and he began to tell me things that he wants done in the body of Christ, that we are to esteem one another more highly than ourselves. We are to love one another. Love is what binds us together, what unites us. You know how they said, Jesus said, how they shall know them? By their love for one another. I mean, I know that you're going to go and talk to Christians in the world today, and they're going to talk about others. But I tell you what, that ain't what God asked us to do. God asked us to love one another. How many has family? Brothers, sisters? How many of them you like all the time? No, none of us. <laughs> oh, Sister Freed. <Freeze. laughs> Sister Freed's got some good sisters. <laughs> but, uh, but don't you love them anyway? Don't you, you don't castracize them, you don't exactly. kick them out of your life That's because right. they don't do what you want them to do or they don't do operate the way you want them to operate, but you still love them. See, I've been around family, and some people have not understood our family because they said, well, you should do something about what they're doing. You should. Like I should hate my children. I can't hate my children. God doesn't hate his children. How can I hate my children? And so, I, I, have my children been able? Oh, no. <laughs> See? See? <laughs> uh, I cannot uh, hate my children. Even if they do things wrong, I am there to love them and to support them and to help them to realize that there's a better way of doing things in our life, a better way, a better choices to make than what we've made in our lives. Yes. All right. And so the, that's what God does for us. That's what a loving relationship for it does for us. He, he nudges us along. He sends the Holy Spirit in our life to encourage us to do what's right. We're not always going to do it. We're not always going to love people like we should. I can tell you that. That's right. It's a fact. You're not. Because we've got to deal with this flesh. we got to deal with that old nature sometimes. I can tell you this, that God has started this church on relationships. He started on a building it on a loving relationship. And when we started in our house and we and we uh, started with a Bible study and then it grew into a Sunday service and then we grew out of that and we bought this building. Uh, but i got to tell you, God has sent some people in this church that I had a hard time loving. I'm on a, I'm on a trip. Uh, convention and I'm coming back and my wife calls me on the way back. She says, you know, you can't believe who came by. I said, no. She says, uh, such and such came by. He, he wants to come to church here. And she said, I invited him to sing. I said, you did what? <laughs> and I said, he did me wrong. She said, I'm just doing what God told me to do. And I had to pray about this. I mean, I, I said, Lord, I can't have this kind of attitude. I, I don't want anything in my life. I had to get it. I got to tell you, that first Sunday, I didn't get over it. The second Sunday, I didn't get over it. And for six months, I fought that. But I want to tell you, after six months, that brother came to me and said, I am sorry I did this to you. And I said, I started to cry. Because I'm sorry because I held it against you. And God restored that back to a relationship Lord. that was meaningful. Yes. And so I'm telling you today, God is a restorative God, and God expects us to begin to wait upon him and just be silent sometimes. Don't be so, don't fill your life with such clamor and such noise, but begin to get before God and begin to seek his face and begin to feel his love just come down and envelop you. When you walk around that place, you watch, you walk away with such peace. You walk away with such love. You walk away with such joy in your heart. And you can't have you can't really, when you have those experiences with God, you can't, there's nothing really you can compare it to. It's like uh it, it, there's nothing there. I mean, I can't compare anything to it. You know? And, and so it, uh, he says, truly my soul waiteth upon God for him cometh my salvation. Salvation is in God and God alone. You know, salvation also means their deliverance. 
God brings deliverance into our life. Many a time, how many has ever struggled with things in their life that they needed God to deliver them from? God does that. In verse 2, he says this, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be freshly moved. Wow, that's a secure place. Amen. That's a secure place. Think about the parable that Jesus told about the two men who built a house. And it says one built upon the shifting sand, and the other one built upon the rock. And it says a great storm arose, and it beat vehemently on the house. And the one that was built on the shifting sand fell. But the one who was built upon, and, and you know what God said about that? Great was the fall. God takes no pleasure in people falling. Yeah. God takes no pleasure in that. Right. It says his house fall and great was the fall, but he who built upon the rock, his house stood the storms of life. And so when we begin to get out time with God, we begin to spend time with God, he begins to give us the strength. He begins to, to give us the, the, to believe him no matter what the situation dictates, no matter how hard the trial looks, no matter how bleak the picture is, God begins to paint something beautiful into our lives, and he begins to share his love more in those times, Brother Danny, than any time. Yeah. In those times when we're filled all alone and no one's there, God begins to give us his love more and more. Yeah. Just when the enemy comes in and tells you you're all alone, tell him he's a liar. Oh yeah. For God shall so never leave me nor forsake me. He's thinking closer than a brother. That's the truth. The devil tells the lie. The lie says, God's not with you. The truth is, God is with you. So when the devil comes and tells me God's with me, I know he's with me more than he ever was. Yeah. Now I'm getting ready to close. The guy felt like they ministered a lot to the music. But this is the fact. Everybody's read the poem, Put the Rich in the Sand, right? No? Oh, that's good. I can't quote the whole thing, right? <laughs> Didn't want to hear it again, right? Yeah, I was. <laughs> I hear the cover test touch from there. <laughs> anyway, in the footprints of sand, it shows two sets of footprints. And the uh, songwriter, the poem writer, I'm not even saying that word right, has that. <laughs> back and he said, God, I noticed that in the hard times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. He said, God, where were you? And God said, well, I was carrying you. Doesn't God carry us in the difficult times? Doesn't he give us the strength to face the situation in our life, whether it be finances, health, or relationships, or bad job situations? God gives us the strength when we begin to wait upon him, he becomes our rock, our defense. He becomes our savior. He brings his joy and his peace and his love into our lives. And he begins to restore us. I served the Lord for over 35 years. I've been ministry for 30 years. And for four or five of those years, I walked completely away from God. I went back into the world and I did everything that I shouldn't do. And in all that time, I knew God was there, but I pushed him back. I didn't want I wanted to do my thing. I've been serving for 25 years. I thought five years. I didn't have any go in five years. I just, <laughs> Anyway, I'm, I'm working in Kansas City. I had a good life. And God had promoted. I say God had promoted me, I guess. But anyway, wherever I worked, I always ended up in management. You know? And so I'm doing real well. You know? I'm, out, I'm doing route sales for a company in the Lowell and Clark, Kansas. And uh, I'm driving a truck, and I'm just loving the job. And I'm loving life at that time. And I'm getting real ill. And so 
I knew I was real sick. I knew there was something definitely wrong. And so I drove my route truck to the emergency hospital, the hospital there in Overland Park. And uh, what happened was I had three blockages in my heart, and they said if I hadn't got there when I did, I probably would have died. And what I'm saying is this, that sometimes God allows things to happen in our life that draws us back to him. That's right. And that's what was the turning point. I said, God, no more will I ever walk away from you. And I will serve you with everything. The only thing God asked, you know, the two greatest commandments. How many know the two greatest? I know I said it once twice, but I'm going to just repeat it again. Uh, they all used to know. <laughs> but the two greatest commandments is this. The love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. He said the second greatest commandment is this, that you love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. Esteem them more highly than you. And so that is the two greatest commandments. And you know that the word commandment, if you look it up in the Greek, means prescription. That's God's prescription for the Lord. The love the Lord thy God. You know, God will write your script. Well, God wants the script. It says, well, love the Lord thy God. And so, let us this morning, let everybody stand this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, I love God more than anything. And I want us to be, Danny, I want us to pray with you. Is that all right? If you and have to let us pray with you. If you'll just come on up. Anybody else need prayer? If you need prayer, if you want to draw closer to God, don't be embarrassed. Come up. And we will uh, believe God for you because God is good to us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Don't don't be shy. Brother Bob, you come up and help us pray. Steve, can you come up? And anybody else that wants to help come and pray, let us pray. I know that Ryan and Jim are facing some things in their life and that there's some real struggles in their life. But God is able. God is able. God is able. Can I say that again? God is able. What did I say? Okay. okay. So God is able. God is, God is the creator of the universe. He, he spoke this world into existence. And if, if God has control of everything in our lives, amen, you believe that? Amen. This morning, God has control of your lives. Right. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to have a moment to go Danny, uh, He's got people praying all over the world for him because I have friends everywhere. I have friends in Africa and, and everywhere, and they're praying for him. <coughs> and uh, I have friends all in the United States, pastors, friends, and stuff. And so we're believing God for a powerful touch in his life and a healing touch in his life. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we just pray right now, God. We rebuke this sickness in the name of Jesus, God. We curse every cell that is sick, God. And we ask that you would bring help to every cell of his body. You formed him. You made him, God. You knew him before he was even formed, Father. God, we pray, God, right now, your healing touch, God. Let, like the palm of the Iliad, flow from the head, top of the head to the tips of his foot, God. Let him be made whole. In the name of Jesus, we command it. Amen and amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we pray for Ryan and Regina. Father, we disagree right now, God, that you're going to move in this situation, Father God. What the enemy has meant for their harm, you're going to be for their good, Lord God. You're going to bring them out with victory in their lives, and the glory of the Lord is going to be revealed. Father, we thank you for it, God. Strengthen them, God. Let their faith remain in you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Anybody else? Real quick. Glory to God. All right, we're all good. Shake hands with me, friends. Oh, yeah.